Hello and welcome back to presentation two where I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the data sets you're going to be using for your project. As you may remember, it's the digitized 19th century books collection, which is about 65,000 digitized books, largely from 1789 to 1876, covering topics like philosophy, poetry, history, and literature. The digitization took place in 2007 and 2008, and the 65,000 books from that era represents about 2.6% of our physical collection. The funding for this project came from Microsoft. As I mentioned earlier, there is a collection guide that has been written specifically for this set of digitized materials. I strongly recommend that you look at it. So you're going to be working with what we call the Microsoft Books Collection. And we're going to be looking primarily at the metadata as the, the main form of data you're going to be working with. At the end of this presentation, I will also talk about some other information that you could use as part of your project. However, I have grayed this out in my presentation because after discussion with the tutors, we thought it would only really be possible for the most technically gifted of you to be able to work with, for example, the text within the books or possibly the images and other various forms of information. The first thing to say is that this collection is public domain, which means you can copy, modify, distribute and perform the work even for commercial purposes or without asking for permission. This was a decision that was made in August 2012. I would like to give significant acknowledgements for the metadata services team, particularly Alan Danskin and Victoria Morris, for their help in preparing the metadata, which is the data you're going to be using, the collection guide, and a significant input into this presentation. Their contact details are there. This is a screenshot of the data set that you're going to be using as part of your project. It constitutes about 49,317 19th century books digitized by Microsoft. You may remember I mentioned 65,000 books. And the reason for that is some of these books are multiple volumes. The Excel spreadsheet um, describes, each row describes the book. Each column identifies an attribute pertaining to that book and the cells contain the values. See the guidelines which are provided. If you go to the tiny.cc BL Labs Uni Malmo folder and go into the data folder, here you'll see the Microsoft Books records that you can download for the project, as well as a PDF and a Word document for the, the guide representing what each of the fields um, are about. The metadata collection guide is a very critical document that you're going to need to help you get familiar with the data you're going to be using for this project. It's really important you look at this document because in it we describe what each of the fields represent. So we're going to be talking in this presentation about this data or and the data we're going to be calling metadata. Metadata is basically a description of the data. So a description of each of the books. We're going to briefly talk about metadata models and standards that we use. We're going to be talking about an example that the British Library worked on to improve the metadata. And then we're going to be talking about your project. In order to access our collections, you can use the interface explore.bl.uk. 
This is a catalogue which enables you to access our collections. It enables you to find a known resource. It enables you to find resources that have attributes in common, such as place of publication or publisher. It enables you to evaluate the results that you get from your search. And it enables you to navigate between the results of the search. And even access to the resources. The catalog is a collection of metadata descriptions or records. This relies us on having metadata that is accurate, comprehensive and consistent. Each description acts as a surrogate for the resource it describes. This enables discovery and fulfillment and also provides us an inventory or list for managing the collections that we have. In order to get good discovery, this will depend on good metadata. Good metadata is, is accurate, comprehensive and consistent. And if you're interested, there's a link to a URL which talks about the British Library's metadata strategy. Our metadata is a key organisational asset representing centuries of resource investment. Not all metadata is good or fit for purpose. There are often errors and inaccuracies, and these are largely down to human error. There are things that are often missing, such as the language of the item, what kind of genre it is, what subject the item covers, or even the country of publication. Often there is inconsistent terminology because humans use natural language and they don't use controlled vocabularies, for example, picking from an agreed list of terms. We really would love your help to help us make more sense of our metadata. Here is an example of metadata. It's not what you think, is it? Well, it's actually a record slip from the British Museum Library. This is metadata that was recorded when we didn't have digital devices. It comes from 1842 and it is handwritten. Is this good metadata? We would argue that it is because it describes accurately what the item is. The really important analogy here is that software ages like fish. Metadata, i.e. the description of things, is like a fine wine. It, 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 as it gets older, it can get better, but it has to be cared for, otherwise it may become corked. Looking back at this slip, is this good metadata? We have information about an amendment that was made and an amendment that was made at the bottom. Here is, a, is an example of that metadata record in digital form. And it doesn't just endure. Information starts to, to, some of the information stays the same. The information evolves as we start to add more information. There are several metadata standards that enable us to provide better quality information. There are so many to choose from. And the real question is what is relevant to the things that we are actually using and uh, to describe our materials. Here's an example of a complex ecology of metadata to describe different kinds of materials. As you can see, it's extremely complex. There are different sectors to this wheel, which provide different functions and describe different kinds of resources. An example project that we worked on to improve the metadata was using some computer modeling. One of the problems that we have is that many of our metadata records don't 
always identify the language of the material that has been described. Then a project took place to see if it was possible to uh, computationally add this information. So a statistical model was used to analyze the words in the title and make a prediction of the language that the, the material was about. This was largely dependent on a training set of data to create word language frequencies. So for example, here you can see the title contains the word, contains a Hungarian word. So it's probably a Hungarian title. Using very sophisticated models, we were able to, uh, to add 1.5 million new language codes assigned with a very high degree of confidence. This has enabled us to improve um, the quality of information that we use to describe things and helps um, for researchers to, to discover them in the future. There's a very important lesson that we can learn and if you've seen the f Disney film Disney film Bambi, I, I encourage you to look at the first 25 seconds of this YouTube video. There's a lesson from Thumper a Rabbit that we are going to use in our work for describing metadata. And that is, if you can't say something true, don't say nothing at all. In the original Bambi film, Thumper says, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So sometimes words can belong to more than one language. In this example, we have Latin and English. Here below we have another example. Is this, is this English or is this, Lat is this Latvian? Here we have a description which is entirely in Latin. Here are some examples of projects that we have used to work on this data set that you're going to be working on. This is an example of some work that was done by Ruby Dixon, who was a school work experience student. She was given a very similar data set that you've been given, and her task was to trawl through the books to see if she could find any books in the collection which contained digitized books and images about Finland. If you follow the link, Ruby talked about her work and the tools that she used in order to be able to do her research. I strongly recommend you follow the links on this slide to find out a little bit more about the work that she did. Another student, Nadia Mirianova, a school work experience student, did something very similar, but this time tried to identify all the titles within this very large collection that were about the Russian language. Again, her work has been documented in these links. Another colleague, Christine Herner, from the School of English was very interested in being able to identify books within the collection that represented fiction or non-fiction and her work is available and downloadable in the example folders that I've given you links to. This is another project that was identifying titles within the books that were relevant for Latin American studies. I've been working on using our data on a number of different courses around the world. Over the last few years, I've been working with University College London on a, on a course called Information Through the Ages, where we have given students the same data set that we're going to give you and we've asked them to come up with 
collections within the larger collection which they can then further describe for example provide visualizations for or tell tell us a story about what's actually in that collection some of the projects they've worked on are things like texts christian texts books that contain that are written by female authors books about the queens queens of england theater travel music books about the industrial revolution non-fiction english language accounts of armed conflicts uk poems by female authors books about india books about english colonies what we're hoping is that some of the data sets that you create will eventually be deposited at the British Library in our repository. The beauty of this is that other people will be able to use the, the, the data sets that you have created to work on other projects. This slide is very important because if you end up dis um, creating a data set, these are the fields you will need to complete if you would like your data set to live on our institutional repository. We will need a title. We will need a description or abstract of the data set. What kind of data set is it? Where was it published? Things like digital object identifier and official URL you don't need to worry about, but keywords will be useful. So your project. We want your project to really help us improve our, the quality of our metadata. And what we've found is students are much more motivated if they can help us to create collections that didn't exist before. We're providing you with a data set of about 50,000 records. We recommend you focus on just this spreadsheet, but if you have time, you, you, you're welcome to dig in deeper. Any relevant project results will be fed back into our catalogue, so you'll actually be doing something to help us. But it'll be really important that any work you do is relevant, useful and accurate. Some possible project ideas could be to find all resources of a particular genre or form. Find everything relating to a particular author, person or organisation. Or finding everything published in a particular town and identify the country of publication. But really, it's important that you focus on your own ideas. Remember the project principles. If you can't say something true, make it achievable choose an area where you have the requisite knowledge of the data of sources and the context record the provenance try to write as much as about the data as you can and how you came about finding it make sure it's legal in this case this data set is legal because anybody is able to do anything with it because it's public domain. Be accurate. Finally, if you want to dig in deeper and go into other aspects of this data set, um, then here, is some, here are some links to some other projects. If you would like to find the text for all these books, then you can download via this link 15 giga, a 15 gigabyte file, which is access to all the text from all the books. Warning, you will need some significant technical skills to be able to do this. If you're interested in all the images in these books, which amount to about a million, you can download all the images from these books from the links there. Or all the images from these books have been cut out and made available on Flickr.com 
and all the images are freely available. So if you want to, if you're interested in the images, you can visit that URL. The images that exist online have also been tagged by individuals. If you're interested in the tags that were generated by individuals, you can download them via that link there. And a project that we worked on with uh, three students from Stanford um, used artificial intelligence to automatically tag all 1 million images. And you can download the data set there. Flickr Commons, where the images exist, also has an application programming interface. And if you are familiar with that term, then you can use computational techniques to do further things with those. If you're interested in place, the Wikimedia Synoptic Index is a great place to start. This was generated by a number of volunteers who are looking for maps within these books. This is a great resource if you want to find information about place within these books. And finally, just to summarize, the data sets that you create may end up living on our institutional repository for other researchers to use in the future.